Hi guys, welcome back to Nairobi Legal. My name is Rogers Gerinji and this is our first video to entertainment law within the Republic of Kenya. Now, as far as entertainment law is concerned, uh, for today's video, these are the key objectives we set out to achieve, meaning that by the end of the video, we must know the distinction between a real and an accidental celebrity. These are two different statements that we must know by the end of the video. We also need to know the balance between the private interest of a celebrity and the public interest in the publication of uh, that celebrity's details. The other objective is for us to, uh, to appreciate the competing rights of free speech and privacy and the proper balance between privacy and uh, publicity rights when it comes uh, to the lifestyles of celebrities. As a celebrity, you have a right to publicity and a right to privacy. But you need to appreciate that in the context of entertainment law, the more of a celebrity you are, the less privacy you have, and the less privacy the courts are willing to give to you. So what I mean here is that because you're a public figure, uh, the public is going to be interested in your activities, meaning that whatever you do, the public will have an interest in it because they are used to you um, exposing most of your daily life uh, affairs. So just to appreciate this using an example, if Celebrity B is walking on the streets of Diani on a holiday, uh, this uh, will not warrant him or her privacy because you are a public figure and so people are suddenly interested in your activities. Meaning that if you see a celebrity walking on the streets of Diani, suddenly of course a crowd will come around that celebrity. They want to know what's going on as far as that celebrity is concerned. However, we need to appreciate that um, if the same celebrity is going through a private moment, and here in a private moment could be that maybe you're undergoing medical treatment, in this case, yeah, your right to privacy is actually warranted, meaning that you deserve a moment to privacy, because as you can see, treatment or going to a hospital is more of a private affair. Now, in addition to the previous uh, slide, we need also to understand that if you're an accidental celebrity, then in this case your right to privacy is taken more seriously because you're considered a private citizen. Now to put this into context, uh, this is an accidental celebrity and this is a real celebrity. So the example again to specify this, I'm sure you remember the Githeri man of 2017. He is an example of an accidental celebrity, meaning that you just become a famous overnight. You've not been a celebrity well known to people over the years. So a proper example of an accidental uh, celebrity is the Githeri man, while an example of a real celebrity could be the Kim Kardashians. These are people we've known for a long time. They are famous and we know them on our daily basis. So this is the distinction between a real and accidental celebrity. Obviously, I can't talk about Kim Kardashian without mentioning South Seoul in the Kenyan context. Now, the South Soul guys are real celebrities. We know them, they are famous, and we continue to know them. So this will make a proper example for who a, a real celebrity is within the Kenyan context. Moving to the second objective of this video, which was the balance between the private interest of a celebrity and the public interest in the publication of his or her details, we're going to be looking at the case of Naomi Campbell that involved um, her invasion of privacy, meaning that her private information was actually published in a newspaper article. So, as we discuss at this case, I want us to be able to understand that when it comes to invasion of a celebrity's privacy, the question is what a reasonable person uh, of ordinary sensibilities uh, would feel if he or she is placed in the same position as the celebrity faced with the same publicity. Meaning that you put yourself in that position and assume, if I were this person actually, how would I feel if, I, if my private information was made public? So this is what uh, the court looks at. And we're going to discuss uh, this in the case of uh, Naomi Campbell versus the Mira uh, newspaper. Uh, so guys, for accent purposes, her name is Naomi Campbell, not Naomi. Anyway, she's a celebrated fashion model, well known across the globe. Her name is just a household name. By just mentioning it, someone knows her. She's acted in series such as The Empire. She's a business lady. 
known both locally and internationally. She's been with global leaders. Anyone knows Naomi Campbell, and if you don't, just check her out on YouTube. She has a YouTube channel. Anyway, on the 1st of February 2001, uh, The Mirror published an article uh, about uh, this famous fashion model exposing her detail, her private details. And the headline of the newspaper was that I am a drug addict. This was accompanied by pictures of Naomi, uh, meaning that they went ahead to write stories that she had been attending uh, sessions uh, to beat her addiction. And remember, this was private information. And the pictures that were taken of Naomi were taken by a private hired photographer who took them secretively without her knowledge. And then she uh, sued for evasion of her privacy. Remember I told you that there are certain circumstances under which a celebrity is entitled to her right to privacy, as you can already see in this uh, case. On the same day when Naomi's private information about her attendance of uh, a facility called Narcotics Anonymous, which is a clinic where she went for sessions, uh, on that same day when that information was actually published by this newspaper, she sued uh, for damages and compensation for breach of confidence and unlawful invasion of her privacy under the Data Protection Act of 1988. So remember, like I told you, the circumstances under which a celebrity will require to have her private moment considered. Yeah, In this case, uh, there was a hired photographer who she had no clue about and this person was busy taking pictures of her as she underwent this private moment of trying uh, to beat the drug addiction. So before you proceed into the next uh, part of this uh, video, please consider reading these facts. If you don't, don't proceed. Anyway, please remember to read this so that you get the context of what uh, the Naomi Campbell's case was against uh, the mirror. Read this. So the legal issues that came out in this case were that um, was the information published by the Mirror in regard uh, to Campbell private and confidential and as you can see here that uh, the information uh, involved the fact of her receiving treatment, uh, the fact of Naomi receiving treatment from Narcotics Anonymous, this was a clinic, and the details, uh, the duration, the frequency, the commitment and behavior at the meeting so you see, this is information that was actually gotten from the inside. Um, there is a private um, photographer busy taking pictures of her. Um, and then the other thing is that the visual display of Naomi leaving the meeting, you see? These are the things that came out in this case. So the question is, was the information published by the mirror in regard uh, to Campbell private and confidential? Now, in regard to disclosure of this private information that talked about the durations at Narcotics Anonymous, when she went for the meetings, what time she spent there, how, what was her behavior during the sessions. When it came to that, yeah, disclosure of private information. The court actually, uh, this is how the court um, reasoned in this case. The information published by the Mirror was a confidential and private in nature and was obtained in breach of confidence. Remember, this deep information was gotten from the inside of the clinic yeah, in breach of confidence. And the details of Naomi's treatment at Narcotics Anonymous was of a private nature. Remember, I told you, much as you are a celebrity, there are certain instances where your right to privacy has to be accorded to you. So remember that you have to consider in this case that the photographer was secretively taking her pictures. This photographer was hired by the mirror. So you see already an aspect of invasion of privacy. The other thing uh, the court actually stated is that there was a reasonable expectations that the details obtained by the respondent, meaning uh, the mirror newspaper by obtaining uh, this uh, these details from Narcotics Anonymous would be kept confidential, meaning that by receiving this information, you have to use your reason to know that this is confidential information to actually be kept. Now, the essential anonymity and private nature of Narcotics Anonymous uh, merits protection of this information. Remember that uh, there is, as far as uh, this center was concerned, it is an anonymous place where people go to get better. 
you undergoing a drug addiction they're helping you to actually be that addiction so it's more anonymous and no one needs to know where you're going and at what time so and that information that you give that facility or to be private information that has to be guarded. So when the mirror went and had access to that information and went ahead to publish it, there was a breach of confidence. And the other thing that came up and the, what the judges stated is that the party subject uh, to a duty of confidence, in this case, the mirror newspaper, knew or ought to have known that Miss uh, Campbell reasonably expected her privacy to be protected in this case. Remember, you can actually just use your reason to know that uh, this person, by going to this anonymous center uh, to undergo that uh, session to beat her addiction, she expects that information to be kept confidential. So this was a discussion that came up as far as a disclosure of the private inf information of Miss uh, Naomi was concerned. The other key thing that came out in the case of Miss Naomi uh, was the key question that I want you to understand. In fact, pause and ask yourself uh, this question that came out in the course of this case. Is there a degree of journalistic margin allowed? Does putting the record straight about uh, Miss Naomi's drug addiction, uh, which uh, the mirror was entitled to, justify the photographs that were taken uh, secretly to add conviction to the published uh, story? So remember, this is a question that came out in that case, and I'm sure even you as a student, you can ask yourself this question, yeah? Does putting a record about someone, yeah, justify the photographs taken secretly to add conviction to a published story? Think about it for a moment. And so as far as this was concerned, the court stated that the mirror's freedom of expression, yeah, in terms of um, publishing of Naomi's uh, details when she went, underwent that private session, does not justify the publication of private and confidential information received in breach of confidence. Uh, so this information was received in breach of confidence, meaning that the insiders gave out this information about Miss Naomi. And so just because your freedom of um, expression as the newspaper in this case published this story it does not justify that you can go ahead and publish a private information that is confidential and you receive this information in breach of confidence remember a private hired photographer taking pictures of miss naomi in this case and also these details of naomi's uh, drug addiction being gotten from the inside and published within the newspaper so the mirror was not uh, correcting any falsehoods in uh, Campbell's treatment of drug addiction, meaning that, you know, the way uh, newspapers uh, come out to correct a story and bring out a fact or the truth, this is what, uh, this is not what the mirror was actually doing. They were not correcting any falsehood, but they simply went to get private information uh, that was confidential in breach of confidence and uh, published it in the newspaper piece. So this is what uh, the, this, was, this was the reasoning of the court. So guys, when it came to the court's ruling, Naomi was awarded this much in respect of invasion of the right to privacy. And uh, this much for the additional two articles that were done to follow up on that story. And a key thing came up in this case, yeah? In the context of Naomi's case, the potential for disclosure of information to cause harm, remember, was an important factor to be taken into account, meaning that this information is being disclosed to cause harm. So that is a very key factor that was taken into account yeah, in the assessment of the extent of the restriction that was needed to protect Miss uh, Naomi's right to privacy. So you need to appreciate this statement. Read it twice understand it much better someone exposing or disclosing your private information yeah to cause harm is an important factor that will be taken into account in the assessment uh, of the extent of the restriction uh, that is actually needed to protect that person's right to privacy and this case happened in the year 2004 and for this much damages to be given then it is a lot of money had it have happened currently Mean the damages would have been even much more than uh, the year 2004. So remember that the details of Ms. Campbell's attendance at Narcotics Anonymous were private information which required a duty of confidence. Yeah.
This was the ruling of the court. Pictures taken by a hired photographer, information about specific things such as the duration, the time, the behavior of Miss Naomi while at Narcotics Anonymous. All that information was gotten in breach of confidence and still published by the Mirror newspaper. So these are the things you need to look at. Can um, a journalist actually just pick private information in breach of confidence and uh, go ahead to actually share it with the public? Ask yourself such questions. This case was a classic case for someone to understand the publicity rights of um, celebrities and the uh, right to privacy as far as uh, celebrities are concerned. I've been struggling to look for a case in Kenya similar to this one. I failed, but when I find one, sure, I'll actually have an overview of what it is and share with you guys. Having understood the case of Naomi that involved an invasion of her privacy and the fact that her personal data was actually exposed to the public, now I want us to shift the Data Protection Act of Kenya, uh, 2019, and it provides uh, under Section 72 for offences of unlawful disclosure of personal data. Now, in Kenya, a person who discloses personal data to a third party commits an offense, meaning that if you get someone else's personal data and then you expose it to a third party, in that case, you're committing an offense. Remember, this is personal data you're exposing, so you commit an offense. And you need also to appreciate that there are certain circumstances under which personal data of a person may be exposed and there will be no offense. As you can already see under section, uh, subsection uh, four, uh, subsection three shall not apply to a person who is an employee or an agent of a data controller or a data processor acting within the scope of such mandate. Meaning that, of course, if you're working in a, a data controller uh, place or you're just the agent, then in that case, there are certain circumstances where you're going to actually disclose personal data to a third party and commit no offense uh, within the Republic of Kenya. But the take home point here is that if a person discloses personal data to a third party, meaning that you get someone's personal data and share it with the public or a group of people, then you commit an offense as far as the Data Protection Act of Kenya is concerned. We also need to appreciate that under Section 73, a person who commits an offense under this act, yeah, for which no specific penalty is provided or otherwise contravenes this act, shall on conviction be liable for fine not exceeding 3 million or to an imprisonment and not exceeding 10 years. So remember, when you expose uh, this information, you may actually uh, pay a fine not exceeding 3 million, meaning that you can pay 1 million, 500,000, anything, but the limit is 3 million. And also, you can actually be imprisoned for a term not exceeding 10 years, meaning that you can be jailed for about 10 years, yeah, you can be jailed for nine, but not more than actually uh, 10 years. Or otherwise, you can actually get both the penalty and the imprisonment uh, term given to you uh, for exposing personal information. So this is where we stand as far as a disclosure of personal data is concerned. Remember that in this unit of entertainment, I'm going to be talking about image rights, personality rights. Um, you also need to appreciate that there's a distinction between uh, topics of defamation and privacy and I've done a video on defamation consider watching that video to understand uh, when can a person sue for defamation remember that for defamation if the statement is the truth then there is no defamation case so no matter how mean a statement that is said about you so long as it's true then defamation will not hold so when also it comes to aspects of now a publicity that we've like we've been sharing a privacy uh, i'm going to be explaining all these things as far as entertainment is concerned as far as the lifestyles and celebrities are concerned so please remember again remember again to subscribe so that you receive notifications each time i will be posting a video on entertainment law in kenya thank you